Hello, my name is Alistair Jardine and welcome to my channel. My channel is gonna focus on cigars. I'm gonna do a series of videos specifically on growing cigar tobacco. And as far as I know, I'm the only one on YouTube that I could see growing cigar tobacco in South Africa. I'm sure there are a few other people doing it, but nobody else is making videos of it, so I could be the first for that, which is quite cool. So welcome aboard. Um, I enjoy smoking cigars. It is a very enjoyable hobby indeed, but they are very expensive. Um, they're all imported. Nobody produces them commercially in South Africa. Um, I imagine that's because it's a very labor-intensive endeavor. And I think people who've considered it have looked at the costs of the labor involved and the math just doesn't add up. So you could pump a lot of money into starting something up. Uh, you'd have to train your staff because um, there's no knowledge of that sort of thing here. Rolling, rolling cigars is a very specific skill. So you'd have to get someone in to train them or they'd have to go overseas to Cuba or elsewhere in the Caribbean to get those skills. And then the actual growing or maybe purchasing the tobacco um, and then processing it and then eventually rolling the cigars. It's a very big operation. So I think the costs involved are just too high. You'd end up with a product that's too expensive for the local market and then maybe it won't compete with the international market. So I guess some people have looked at it and decided it's just not, it's not really viable. But you never know, it might be in the future. So I uh, had the brainwave of growing tobacco myself and I had a look online and sure enough, there are many people around the world doing it. Uh, Fair trade tobacco.com is a very good site to go to. It's a very good forum. There are growers on there with decades of experience. So mainly based in America. There are some other people around the world, New Zealand, Australia, um, in the East. So it's a very good, good sort of place to just trawl through the old threads, um, see what the other people have done in the past. Um, so there's a lot of information there. It's a very nice place to go to. So I ordered some seeds from northwestseeds.com. I will put the link down in the description below for you to have a look at. Um, I purchased some seeds from them in 2016 and I planted some seeds and I had a pretty good crop. It was a massive learning curve. Um, I encountered quite a few problems that are specific to this area. Wind, for example. So by the way, I'm, in, uh, I'm near Worcester in the Western Cape. Uh, it's about an hour from Cape Town. And every time a cold front hits the Cape, we have, uh, especially where I am now, specifically this spot, it's like a wind tunnel. So the wind uh, pushes the front ahead and the wind just comes howling through here. Um, I had some plants in, in buckets and the wind would just twist them. They would corkscrew and then the stems would get damaged. And yeah, those plants never made it. So I, I learned a lot with my first grow. And so this year, I will definitely be be putting some plants in a tunnel. I just got a basic frame up. I still need to cover it with, with shade cloth. I'm thinking just some light 10, maybe 20%. I think 10% would be all right. Um, basically, just to keep the wind out, keep the insects out. I had these grasshoppers that chewed massive holes in my Criollo plants. I don't know why. They, they loved it. They just chowed them. Um, so it's to keep the wind out, keep the insects out, and uh, yeah, so we'll see how that goes. So this will be my second grow attempt. Um, the first grow back in 2016, 2017, I allowed um, a couple of plants of each type. I had four different types of tobacco, so I allowed a couple of plants of each type to flower and I've saved the seeds from those plants for my next grow. So the idea is after about three or four seasons, the plants have acclimatized to their new location. And then the tobacco seeds you end up with will be sort of um, 
well, they'll be they'll be comfortable with with the new area that they're in because previously the seeds were from America, so they were used to that environment. Um, so it's a question of growing them for three or four years, saving the seeds each time, planting them again from those new seeds so that they're acclimatized to the local conditions here. So I had some some leaves and uh, color curing was a problem. Uh, so first. Having them in seedling stage is quite tricky. They are prone to die off very quickly. They need the right amount of sunlight, not too much, not too little. Um, too much and they just wither and die. Too little, they wither and die. <laughs> it's just, they are very tricky. Um, but once they're big enough and you can plant them out, um, then they tend to get going and they, and they grow very nicely. You just need to keep an eye on them. So, so I ended up with a bunch of leaves. Now, the humidity here is very low. We are on the edge of the Karoo, which is a semi-desert area. So the humidity is, is low. I mean, it's like 35%, 40 maybe. So if you just hang the leaves up somewhere and dry them, they will just dry out completely and they'll stay green. They won't actually change color. I tried it with a batch. I had like a little tent with boulders plastic made up had buckets of water just to try to get some humidity in the air. It didn't work. They all dried green. I had to toss them. So the only method that really worked for me was pile curing. So you just chuck them in a pile and um, cover them with, with a bit of plastic. And then they, they just sort of sweat and the, and the leaves change color. But you have to check them every single day. Any sign of mold, because the leaves get damp, they're busy losing their moisture and mold loves those conditions so you have to wipe them down every single day um, I've seen on the tobacco forum people would place sheets of newspaper in between each leaf so if you have a massive stack of newspapers that's a good way to go uh, I might try that this time actually I don't think I used newspaper last time I just put them in a pile you know leaves touching each other um, it worked but you need to catch any signs of mold very quickly so I managed to get that part done I had some nice brown leaves um, and then I didn't really see the next step is fermenting and you have to ferment cigar tobacco um, there's a lot of compounds in the leaf that need to be broken down otherwise they are absolutely unsmokable they'll taste awful so what you need is a kind of kiln a chamber where you can put in a nice amount of heat and get the humidity right up to 70 80 percent and then you keep them at a high heat I think it's just it's around it's just under 50 degrees Celsius and you keep it there for about four weeks so the leaves sweat out all that ammonia it's it smells like cat pee apparently you open the door um, and then you know it's working so that's the smell you want and then after about four weeks the smell becomes very pleasant and you have this lovely aromatic smokable tobacco now I didn't get to that stage last time I wasn't able to to make a chamber in time so I just stored my tobacco in the garage I left it in a big box and I think it got too dry it got really crispy dry and a few months ago I got my kiln up and running and I put a batch through it I had problems with the with the temperature controllers um, I wasn't sure I was getting the right temperatures I might have gone too high with the temperature and killed off the enzymes I don't know either way it didn't work so that is something I need to get right this time so I'm expecting to get a decent crop of leaves, but the fermentation part of the process is key. If I get that wrong, I don't have a smokable product. So that's my aim for this grow, one of my aims. But yeah, it would be really nice to end up with some good quality smokable leaves. And then we can uh, do a couple of videos on the actual rolling and ending up with complete cigars. So that, that would be a plus. And that would be amazing. So that's my aim for this grow this year. So from tobacco seeds all the way to cigars, that is what we're going to be aiming for. And I had a pretty good grow, my first grow in 2016. And I harvested some seeds from my plants in 2017. So we've got some little Dutch, Criollo 98, Habano 2000 and Havana 142 and then here we can see some cigars, I got some cigars in my little humidor 
The humidifier has been taken up because it needs to be recharged. And there it is, busy recharging some water. So I'll put that back just now. Okay, so this is the final product. And the whole process starts with some seeds. And as you can see, these seeds are absolutely tiny. They are really, really, really teeny tiny. So here we have a pod. That's from my little Dutch plant. Or plants, I have multiple plants. Let's crack it open. Look at those little seeds. And there are hundreds, hundreds, if not thousands of seeds in each pod. And each plant can produce quite a few pods. So there we go. seeds. So we're going to take the whole process from this all the way to that. It's going to be exciting. All right, so I'm going to start the seeds off in these bottles, five liter bottles. Here's an example of a complete one. And I've never tried this before. I wasn't sure it would work. I gave some seeds to my mother and she did it this way and it works. It seems to work very, very nicely. Um, so what we have here is some coconut, uh, what do you call it? Cocoa peat, coconut peat. And to this, we will add some, a little sprinkle of rock dust, a little bit of perlite. Perlite is nice, it gives uh, the soil medium a bit of aeration. It holds the water a bit like a sponge, but releases it quite quickly as well. Um, vermiculite is, you can also use it, but vermiculite is more for plants that like to have, it holds onto the water more. Um, and tobacco roots don't really like very, very, very wet soil. So I think the perlite is probably a better way to go. So I'm gonna add a little bit of that, a sprinkle of rock dust, a little bit of uh, 315 slow release, just a, just a touch. And then we'll take these bottles up again. I'll pop them on my windowsill. And once I've moistened the whole lot, of course, and then sprinkle some seeds on top. And that should be that. And with this system, you can set them and forget them. And that is something I've, that's, oh, that's amazing if it works, because as many tobacco growers know, the beginning stage is very, very, very tricky. When you have the little seedlings coming up, they are extremely delicate and you end up murdering loads of them because just a little bit of neglect, too much sunshine, not enough water, too much water, they die. They just die very, very easily. So with this system, it is hopefully possible to skip all that, have them in the bottles in a self-contained little uh, microclimate basically where they just happily sprout and do their thing without any outside interference so yeah let's let's give this a go okay so here we have the, the bottle method let's see this one is tobacco it up in there, hard to see anything. So these are the plants after eight weeks. And they're looking pretty good. Very healthy, nice and strong. Very happy. And what I like about this system is it's all self-contained. with No external interference. You can just set it and forget it. And it's doing its thing very nicely indeed. So these plants are big enough to be planted out. We're just waiting for the temperatures to to get a little bit higher. And it's still early spring. Temperatures are still a little bit chilly. Let's see we're having quite a bit of rain here today. But I think very soon, another week or two, these plants can be planted out. Maybe with a little bit of cover for protection from the elements. And they should be doing very well. So I think this is a very, very clever way to 
get the tobacco seedling started in a nice protected protected way so I got a message from my mother saying she didn't cut them all the way around like I've done here um, but it shouldn't be a problem for me I'm just gonna sprinkle the seeds on and then put the other half back on again tape it up and these will go in my windowsill but if you are gonna do it this way um, and maybe hang your bottles up uh, she is done I'll show you the footage I took when I went to visit her um, you can have a length of string or a bit of rope or a bit of wire or even a nail in the wall and you can hang the bottles from the handles if you have a nice sunny wall or shelf or whatever um, so for hanging purposes don't cut all the way around uh, leave a little bit attached for extra strength um, so I didn't think about that and just hacked my way through them completely uh, but it shouldn't be a problem for me because I will just be putting them on the windowsill they'll be standing on the windowsill um, in the sunshine so yeah just bear that in mind um, if you're going to hang the bottles don't cut all the way through if you're not going to hang them you should be fine by cutting them in half like, like I've done here well I've given those bottles two weeks and I've had nothing nothing from the tobacco so I think the the temperature wasn't quite in the sweet spot for them to germinate. Yes, my darling, what? So I had them on this windowsill. I have one bottle left. It has black peanuts in it and they are sprouting. They are very happy indeed. I'm not sure if you can see. There's a few plants in there. Very happy. So nothing from the tobacco. Um, this windowsill it's a nice bit of morning sunlight but I wonder if the tobacco seeds maybe got a bit too hot on the sunny days and we had a mixed bag with the spring weather a couple of days of sunny weather and then three or four days of overcast and rainy so I think they got a bit too hot and then a bit too cold and it just didn't quite hit the sweet spot for them so I've reused the, the coconut mix for my uh, salad herbs so it wouldn't surprise me if a few tobacco plants popped out of there later on I'll keep an eye on that so yeah the bottle method um, I should have actually put a thermometer inside a bottle just to see what the temperatures got up to in there but it didn't work for me this time they could still work for you if you if you're lucky with a spot you choose or if you manage to to protect them from the harshest sunlight and keep the temperature warm enough and they might still work for you anyway so I saw after a week and a half it wasn't going to do anything, so I went back to my tried and tested method of using a hot box. Did you catch a mouse? Is that what you're trying to tell me? You caught a mouse. I see. Yes. Well done. Good job. Now kindly do not take him in the house and eat him outside, okay? Well done. Credit where credit's due. All right, my garage is a mess. Um, just avert your gaze from that side. Okay, so here is my little hot box method. It's a, it's an old rabbit hutch that my grandfather made. Uh, must have been just over thirty years ago. I remember vaguely as a child to transport a whole bunch of rabbits from um, from where we were living in town to a small holding outside another town. And my grandfather's a very skilled woodworker, so he made a whole bunch of these, and this is the last one that survived, I think. So, it has a light source in the back, an old spotlight. And I have a little weather station here just to keep an eye on the temperature, so it's 21 degrees. It varies between 20 and about 26, 27 degrees, so that's the, the sweet spot for the backy. Seems to like that. And I just keep an eye on the temperature and manage it by opening and closing the door, wider or narrower, as needed. So uh, I've got the seeds under here. I like to keep a bit of black plastic on top. It makes them germinate a bit faster. Get your head out of there. Let's see if you can see. You can see the seeds are tiny, but they are pushing. They've got little green blobs 
each one is slowly elongating into a into a little sprout. So this, this method has always worked for me. I've, this is the third or fourth time I'm doing it, and I've managed to get a germination each time. Why not? That's not the end of the process. Nearly the first step. I'm happy with that. And I like using uh, this little magic rabbit hotbox. It reminds me of my grandfather and all his skill and his hobbies. So it's nice to use uh, something that reminds me of his hobbies and passions and incorporate into my hobbies and passions. And that way his memory stays alive and carries on through the generations. So I'm happy with that. Very happy indeed. So, to summarize, I got very excited about the bottle method, as it would mean a lot less work having to care for the little seedlings that pop out. Um, but it did not work for me, sadly. So, back to the old tried and tested method of my magic rabbit hot box. Why is that pigeon flying around us like that? Anyway, distractions, always distractions. So, at least my seeds are germinating, I'm very happy. We are, we are progressing along nicely. So, yeah, an exciting journey ahead of us. So, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll catch you in the next video. I don't have a fancy catchphrase. Do you have a fancy catchphrase for the viewers? Let me just wave. Until next time, bye-bye. How about showing the viewers your fluffy belly? Look at that fluffy, fluffy belly. Oh, so fluffy. Oh, yeah.